Good afternoon. Welcome to the Southeast LA Arts Fest um, and this presentation on the case for California natives. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, that we are on Tongva land and although this presentation is uh, in a digital form, um, we are on uh, the South Coast region, which was traditionally Tongva land and uh, the original stewards of this land. Um, so my name is Chris Sarabia, and I am with the South Coast chapter of the California Native Plant Society. And we're a statewide nonprofit organization. We have 35 chapters and about 10,000 members throughout the state uh, and down into Baja. Um, and we're dedicated to conserving California native plants and all of the natural habitats. And we are also uh, dedicated to increasing the understanding, the enjoyment, and all the horticultural uses of native plants. We, we uh, here at CNPS, we strive to restore nature one garden at a time. And we believe that if uh, we built, built these landscapes in the right way, that we can really change the world that we can really restore nature one garden at a time. And so today I'm gonna to be talking about native plants, uh, what native plants are, why, and some of the benefits. And so here's, a, here's an image may, many know. Um, this is a California poppy, the fields uh, in, I believe this is Antelope Valley, and uh, this is our state flower. Um, and so these are native plants. Um, and so many people know those plants. Um, but what else? What else is a native plant? And so native plants grow here naturally. They are plants that were here before European exploration on the West Coast. And um, they have co-evolved with the animals, the fungi, all the different microbes in the soil. And they've formed different ne networks that are very complex. Um, some networks, we don't quite understand, but we know they're there. And uh, it's very extensive relationships. And so these plants are the foundation of our native ecosystems and the basis upon which all life depends. And so uh, in addition to that, native plants are adapted to California's unique Mediterranean climate. And so California is one of the, of the five Mediterranean climates on the world. And um, out of those five, as you can see here, uh, in central Chile, the Western Cape of South Africa, and Western and South Australia, as well as the Mediterranean Basin, um, California, we, we actually re received the least amount of rainfall. And so that means that our plants rest uh, during the hot, dry summer and early fall. And so, you know, with that in mind, you know, non-native drought friendly plants that typically are coming from other Mediterranean climates, uh, such as in this picture, you see these, these are typical plants and from different parts of the world. Um, and so since California does receive the least amount of water, um, these plants actually do need some irrigation. And so if anybody has grown some of these, you know you gotta water them, otherwise they do, uh, suffer from the lack of water. And so, and this is especially, uh, you know, during the hot summer months. So um, there's definitely a difference between these other plants uh, from other parts of the Mediterranean region and the California native plants. And so why do we want to plant native plants? Well, California is definitely a special place. Um, we live in a part of the world that is, is uh, well, actually it has, the most native plant species than any other state in the nation. And so our landscapes can either help or harm the precious diversity that we enjoy. Um, and we also have uh, the most rare plants um, than any other state in the nation. Uh, one third of our native plants are found nowhere else on earth. And so uh, California, uh, has actually has more rare plants than many countries have actual just regular plants. 
So, you know, that shows a lot. Um, California is definitely a unique place. And in fact, um, we live in a global biodiversity hotspot. So, you know, this is another distinction that we share with a number of other Mediterranean regions. Um, unfortunately, uh, to be a biodiversity hotspot, over 70% of the native habitats must have already been lost. And so, you know, we're lucky to be, to be in this position um, to promote sustainability to our homeowners, contractors, and HOA committees, as well as different boards um, of, of homeowners, because, um, you know, we, we can reverse this trend. 70% um, is quite a bit. And so uh, if we begin to reverse this trend, um, we can really make an impact um, within our communities and affect the native plant communities. Um, the only, you know, the only thing we need is a little bit of information and the willingness to do things um, different than how we've done them in the past. And so with that in mind, what we do here in California matters to the whole world. But even more important is the fact that native plants form the basis of ecosystems. Wild spaces alone aren't enough to support the biosphere. So today, the vast majority of land in the lower 48 states is privately owned. And here in California, around 50% uh, of the land is privately owned. And so as development continues, we need our built landscapes to help. And so when it comes to our gardens, there's no substitute for native plants in supporting life. You know, take insects, for example. Recently, we had noted ecologist Doug Tallamy. He's the author of a, a book called Bringing Nature Home. And he spoke at our conference in Los Angeles. And he shared his findings from more than two decades of research. And his conclusion was that native plants are far superior in supporting the insects that feed the birds and other creatures. Um, and this is as we move up the food chain. And so, you know, with uh, researchers like Doug, um, what he wants us to know is that without insects, none of us survive. So we need to start paying attention to what we are doing to our food webs. Um, and basically we need to get in the business of building living landscapes. So this is typically what we see when we look at our yards. Um, you know, your typical uh, home with the lawn and a couple random trees of different sizes, something, uh, you know, along the edges of your, of your home. So, you know, an average home, not so average in, in every community, but this is typically um, what you see when you drive around in, in some, some nicer neighborhoods. Um, and this is what you see, or actually this is what birds see. And I apologize, the image, um, something, something's wrong with uh, the, the file here. But um, the point of this image is that birds see things differently. Um, this is through the lens of a bird. And so native plants are basically foraging hubs. Uh, so we're not fooling the birds when we fail to plant foraging hubs. Native plants are the larval food for pollinators. They provide the right food at the right time. And pollinators, um, basically they can nectar on native plants, maybe like lavender um, or rosemary, but they're not gonna raise their young there. They need California native plants to survive. And so our choices here in this uh, presentation can literally change the world for the better. It's it's not that hard, really. Um, you can play an incredibly vital role in the health of our watersheds and our ecosystems. And so, you know, a question we, we may ask is, you know, how many species do we need? And <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's kind of a trick question because we need all of them. Um, you know, this is, this is how nature works it needs a variety of species and this is you know basically because biodiversity equals ecosystem services 
So since we've already degraded about 60% of the Earth's ecosystem services, um, we really need to uh, protect whatever's left, whatever native plants are left. And so uh, just to put things in perspective, uh, eight, about 87% of all plants and 90% of all flowering plants are pollinated by animals. And so, uh, you know, if we lose our plants, um, we also lose our pollinators and losing our pollinators is not an option. So from all this, we see that we need to balance our old landscaping criteria with the new. And we are in this together, so let's remind each other to make smarter landscaping decisions. Um, we're all here to be a resource for you and you know, help you out as you make these decisions. And the good thing is that um, our California native plants, they can actually solve many problems. So some benefits of California natives are that they save water, they reduce maintenance, they reduce harmful runoff, and support local ecology. And um, you know by supporting local ecology you're also supporting local wildlife. So you know, replacing water consuming high maintenance traditional landscapes and lawns with California native plants can reduce the average homeowner water consumption by about 60%. Um, and when you combine your, your native plant gardens with uh, rain gardens, swales, and other drainage control techniques, um, you save even more. And so once these uh, gardens are established, Native plants can withstand about, you know, very little water, um, sometimes no watering, it depends on your species. And so they can rely on average rainfall alone. And so we have gone through drought. And so we need to keep that in mind that, um, you know, it's, it, it has to be an average rain year for them to be um, uh, healthy and strong. But, uh, but they're, they're capable, they're adapted to this climate and this type of rain pattern that we get out here in Southeast LA. Um, native plants also reduce maintenance. And so, you know, why waste your time mowing and blowing and hedging away, um, you know, your garden? Uh, you know, since these plants are adapted to the local conditions, it, it kind of means that the traditional maintenance patterns of a traditional garden don't really apply. So you get to really enjoy um, your, your garden a little bit, a little more, a little more than you would in a, in a traditional setting. And so there was a case study done to show just how many savings are possible with native plant gardens. Um, in Santa Monica, a nine year case study was done and they documented the resource consumption of two test gardens. And they found that um, there was an 83% less water use, 56% less green waste, and 68% less maintenance um, than, than your traditional garden. And so this is you know, when it's planned out well um, and cared for properly. Um, that's how you can achieve these, these savings. And, um, you know, the point of the reducing the harmful runoff, uh, a, a lot of locally native plants are adapted to these conditions that are from this area. And so that means you don't um, necessarily have to use harmful pesticides and other supplements that pollute our streams and oceans. And, you know, remembering that most pesticides kill indiscriminately, um, and that means beneficial in insects um, become the secondary targets. And we don't wanna lose those helpful insects. And uh, the, you know, the supporting of local pollinators is important. I think we all enjoy seeing a hummingbird fly by or um, come in uh, nectar at one of our, our plants in our garden, um, as well as butterflies and other beneficial insects. And so planting natives in your garden provides much needed habitat for local pollinators, birds, butterflies, and insects. And the local wildlife. And so, you know, native plant gardens provide urban corridors between natural and agricultural areas. And so, 
bringing nature into your home garden and restoring our environment is is a great thing we can do to support these uh, little critters. I actually saw a roadrunner the other day in Gardena. And so, you know, they used to be um, running around, running around our, our this area and these neighborhoods. Um, but there's no more habitat. And so they, they still, you know, they, they could still come back um, and, and inhabit our areas. And I mean, it's, it's kind of a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful bird if you look at it closely. Um, and how many other birds and other critters can we support by planting native plants? So I'm gonna end this presentation with uh, leaving you a couple resources. And so um, we, you know, we have a lot of resources, but these are some of the easier ones uh, to access. One is Calscape. And so calscape.org is a website, a free website that you can use. And what you do is you enter any address and it, you basically get um, a lot of information on your location uh, and what native plants live there. And so, you know, you, you either type in your address um, in the bar, or you can also uh, type in a specific plant. And um, what it does is uh, it, it gives you a, a list of plants. And so I think uh, the other day I typed in Southgate, just the city of Southgate in general, and it, it gave me about 400 plants. And so the resource is always being updated. It's always being adjusted. Um, but it generates these lists and it's, you know, you see the categories below of uh, the, the, the types of plants, how they grow, if there's a shade or if you're looking for a ground cover or, you know, something very easy that you're, you're less likely to kill on your first try um, if you don't have a green thumb or, you know, very low water use. I mean, there's a lot of categories here and it's, it's, pretty, um, it's a pretty great resource in and starting to make your plant list and seeing what you can do with your garden. So here's a, a profile for the Toyon, which is one of our very common um, shrubs. Uh, the Toyon, you know, uh, Heteromelis arbutifolia. So it gives you that, that scientific name, which you don't need to know, um, but it gives you a lot of information. And so it's almost a, a, a classroom in itself when you log into this website. And uh, you can actually create an account and start to add plants to your list. And that way you can come back later and um, look at that list that you've compiled. You can print that out um, or email it to a nursery and see which plants they need. And also what's interesting about the website is it will show you the nurseries that carry the plants that you may be looking for. And that way um, you're not running around looking for your plants and having to go to various uh, nurseries for a plant or two. Um, you can actually uh, see their inventories um, and as they upload them to Calscape and, and see what they, they have available. So that's, that's, you know, that's always a tricky one is trying to find that specific plant that you want. Uh, another resource is uh, on our website, we just have a blog with tons of information. Um, you know, on different different subjects such as uh, gardening for butterflies or, um, you know, using edible landscapes, um, uh, how to uh, design, you know, from a designer's perspective. Um, it just goes on and on. There's a lot of great articles on there written by uh, the experts. Um, and on that website, we have these planting guides that are kind of a cheat sheet for this area of Southeast LA, um, this South Coast region. And it, uh, it shows you um, which, are, which are the best plants to, to start with, to create a beautiful landscape, what they do, how they grow, how much water they need, all the different details you might need to plant in your, in your landscape. And so it's a, it's a great um, way to get started and use the templates that are provided um, lastly, there's a, a garden ambassador program. So if you're tuning in, maybe you already have a, uh, a garden and you want to uh, showcase it. Um, we have a program for that. And we, you know, we want people to help each other out, to give each other information and um, just kind of show everyone that it's not that hard to do 
uh, this, this kind of landscape and, and really help out the habitat. Um, I want to show you this, um, this list here, and this is a really quick list of local native plant gardens in the Southeast LA area. Um, so there's Hollydale Regional Park, which is in Southgate. And I believe this is picture from there. And so there's a nice path there with various uh, native plants. It's really well kept. Um, Cudahy River Park, it's a smaller, smaller uh, park along the LA River. And um, I think it's a great park and it has a variety of native plants there. Treasure Island Park in Downey, um, great park with a lot of plants and it actually, uh, you know, continues into the Rio Hondo channel there. And so you can take a nice walk and, and check out all the different native plants and what they can be. Um, the Elizabeth Learning Center in Cudahy is also a great school that has a lot of native plants. And um, you can actually see a lot of them without having to enter the school. And so uh, just, just by walking out in front. Um, if you go to the website, uh, SCCNPS, that's for the South Coast uh, chapter of the California Native Plant Society. Um, there's actually a map there that shows all the native plants that, that we know of at least. Um, I'm sure we've missed a couple, but it gives you an idea of, of where people have put in native uh, gardens, um, maintain them, and, um, and kind of leave them open for the public to enjoy. And so we invite you to check that out. I want to mention that if you're in a community group or, um, or if you, you, know, you work at a school or have some type of connection and, and you, you're very interested in planting a native plant garden, um, but maybe need some support, um, we actually have a grant. Um, it's called the Kanzi Grant. And uh, we support native plant gardens in public spaces. And so just go to that same website, sccnps.org. And there, you'll find the application there and you can fill it out and, uh, or you can email us if you have questions and we can help you out. Um, you know, we want to support these gardens in our community. And so with that, I'm going to leave you. Um, and my name, once again, is Chris Sarabia. I'm uh, with CNPS, the California Native Plant Society. And um, my email's there. Um, what else? I just want to, yeah, I just want to thank you all for coming and if there's any questions, I will stay on. Um, I did record this uh, presentation for later use and we will be putting it up on the website um, as well as uh, up on our different social media feeds. Um, so uh, as your South Coast chapter representative, please feel free to reach out if there's anything you need, if you have questions, if you wanna know where to get plants. Um, we do have a plant sale in October. So if you tune into the website, you can get more details. They will be a socially distant curbside pickup style um, plant sale. Um, and one last thing is I want to note that every first Monday of the month, we have, uh, uh, we call it our monthly membership meeting. And we, we basically have presenters come in and give us a cool presentation on projects or gardens or whatever as long as it's dealing with native plants and they're, they're always really cool, really informative, interesting um, talks. And so, you know, with social distancing um, going on, we actually have switched over to zoom. And so you can join from the comfort of your own home and, uh, and get to participate, you know, with your family and, uh, and still, uh, you know, get to learn from home, get to learn about native plants and interact with, uh, with, you know, people that, that maybe have the same um, idea and mentality as you, uh, you know, uh, with respect to nature and, and native, the native plant world. So once again, I want to thank you. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll stick around. Um, thank you.